What's up, everybody? Welcome to PFF at the Combine. Trevor Sikkim, Austin Gale, Mike Renner here with you recapping what we've seen already from day three. But boys, it is a long day here. This is the longest day that we've had so far in Indianapolis. We had podium <laughs> sessions earlier. Offensive tackles and running backs talk to the podiums. But then we have the drills going on right now. So if you guys are watching the show, we have the TV in the background. So we might be flipping out if somebody makes a super long jump, super high jump, runs super fast, something like that. It's going to be a lot of fun over the next 30 minutes. Fellas, what did you think about uh, day three? It's, it's been a jam-packed day so far. It's been a long day, but also when you said that, I was like, it's also been like, it was a long night. You know, you're back to back here. We're running up the, we're you, burning the you're, midnight you're, oil. You're running off of like an hour and a half of sleep. Which is fine. I'm Mike, feeling do you good. have him beat an hour? Like, he, this guy's got like 90 minutes. Yeah, I got actually a good night. <laughs> Don't talk. <laughs> I was up around noon. So. <laughs> Stop. Okay, let's talk about quarterbacks. Quarterbacks not only are on the field, they measured in, and oh boy, were we looking forward to this one. Kenny Pickett, some people's QB1 in this class, didn't have his hands measured. The all-important hand measure. Officer, yeah. It's, that's, that's a fair way to say it. Finally measured in, and eight and a half inch hands. Mm. Now those hands are small, yeah. but not only that, Mike, they are unprecedentedly small. I feel like this, this, this has to pull Kenny Pickett off of a lot of QB1 spots, right? I, I think so. I think it is, is something that matters. The guy who had the smallest hands who over the past 30 years, who's actually like played in the NFL, it's Mike Vick at eight and a half inches as well. Which they're similar. Right, right. right. No, they're, like, they're very similar. And even course. Mike Vick had fumbling problems. Kenny Pickett, 26 fumbles over the course of his career in college at Pittsburgh. That's, that's a lot. And yeah. it's only going to be more so when you get to the NFL and you're playing games in December and January that you weren't playing in college. Like, you, you, yes, he played in Pittsburgh, but like he played in Pittsburgh before it got cold. Yeah. Like that's how college. So, how, works, so. How, how harsh do we think this is going to so, be? Right. I kind of disagree that this is going to like drop him down boards. Everyone who is you know weighing in on Kenny Pickett's draft prospects already knew he had small yeah. hands. There's a yeah. reason he wears two gloves at Pittsburgh. It's to make up for that lack of hand size, right? And it's also like. It's a known issue with him that he has to overcome. This past year, Pittsburgh did not play in a lot of like precipitous weather, but in precipitous weather, sub 40.0 PFF grade. That is, that's the concern, right? Every time you bring up hand size, like where does it actually show up? The fumbling concerns and in bad weather. And if you're not playing in a dome with Kenny Pickett, that's the concern you're going to have. He's going to be playing with two gloves. And the other thing is the NFL ball is bigger, 1.25 inches bigger than the college ball. Everyone says, we've seen him play. What does it matter? He can hold a football. This ball's bigger. It's flat out bigger. We're going to see him throw a little bit at the combine today, obviously, with both of those gloves on. I do think it doesn't drop him down boards because every team knew this. But it's a huge factor that he's going to have to overcome. But it's something that, like, if you really want to believe in Kenny Pickett's stock, like, this is, I, I, don't, I don't know. It's a box to tick. And right, it's not and, it's, and, he, and he's, not, he's not checking the box because yeah. it'd be different, right? It'd be different if it was even Joe Burrow, right? Yeah. When Joe Burrow came through and he had the nine-inch hands, right? And Bur Burrow, they, they kind of played with this a little bit when Burrow talked about like, oh no, I'm not going to be able to be a pro now because yeah. I have small hands, right? I remember him tweeting that out, but this is different. This is like, this is a whole half an inch smaller. And a half inch matters. I'll tell you that right now. I think <laughs> no. that's, that's the big thing. With, the, with him, the nine inch hands, everyone calling out Joe Burrow had small hands and he, won, he almost won a Super Bowl. It's like a full half inch. This is literally the smallest the NFL has ever seen. And I think that's the thing. It's like, one, it's not the worst thing if you're on the small end. Mm -hmm. This is a whole different animal altogether. This is the smallest. Mm -hmm. like, you know, yes, like, right. The outliers, exactly. wherever they are in the NFL, physical outliers are outliers for a reason. You tend not to buy, tend not to want the outliers on the low end, whatever it is. And I really want to discredit this whole thing. If it's just a half inch, there's nothing that big between an eight and a half and nine. It's like we look at these 40 times and the difference between a four threes player and a four fives player is everything. And that's two tenths of a second. Like this is a big deal. When you're looking to bring on a player and you're making multi-million dollar decisions at the quarterback position, drafting these guys, yes, it matters how big their hands are. Guy who holds the football in every single play. It's proven that it's proven that it's harder to be accurate with the football, grip the football in fumble situations and all this stuff. I just feel like a lot of people make a joke out of the hand size stuff, myself included, well, but but it definitely matters and teams yeah. are factoring it in. Well, there's a difference between even being an outlier and being unprecedented. Yes, right? zero percent like time. That is, there's yes. a big difference there, but I want to hear from the chat. Please let us know. Does Kenny Pickett's hand size matter? Do you care at all? Mm -hmm. Let us know. Well, do I, don't know, we're, I yeah. don't know if we're going to run a poll for it or if you guys <laughs> just want to, uh, if you guys just want to uh, blow up the chat a little bit, but I would love to hear from yeah. you. Or, or if, you, if not tomorrow, a poll, or, it's not a poll. I'd like to know how big are your hands. You know, let's see what, sure. what kind of how, how big are your hands. And it's it's like not 
great for me gripping a football. Show like, the camera. You don't feel comfortable. Yeah, can we, can we get feel, a, can we get a close, it doesn't a close feel, up? Right an NFL football doesn't feel like secure to me with nine inches. <laughs> and now, so I think a half shot. You're playing catch bigger. with your friends. You're like, dude, I can barely hold it. <laughs> <laughs> like, this thing is going to drop at any minute. <laughs> Where somebody's like, hey, Mike, you want to go toss picks? Yeah, he's like, no. Start sweating. <laughs> yeah. Start. Mike, we're just shaking when I hold it. We're going to throw the ball around the tailgate. You're like, I don't know, man. I'm all right, dude. I don't feel that secure. <laughs> Can't let's, imagine. Let's move on to wide receiver because, strangely enough, if Kenny Pickett's hand size was not like a story, like if Kenny Pickett wasn't here, I feel like Traylon Burks would actually have the hand size conversation topic yeah. because I, we thought that Traylon Burks was going to have almost 11 inch hands, which are huge for a wide receiver, obviously, that's paramount towards catching the football, securing yeah. the football, bringing it in, gripping it, and everything like that. Yeah. And he comes in with. Nine and seven eighths, right? It wasn't. It wasn't even ten inch yeah. hands. So yeah. it was just. We were making such a big deal about his massive hands, and granted, nine seven eighths. They're still big. He still has big. Kenny hands, Pickett but, would pray for those. Yeah. <laughs> but <laughs> but it's, it was so funny to me that it's almost an inch smaller than what we thought they were. Maybe they're super thick. Maybe he's got like a lot of. Girth. Oh, he's got some meat. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. My thing like, is, I think it's how the team is measuring, right? I think how people yeah. are measuring it, how far you're stretching out, all that stuff matters. I do think with Traylon Burks, the bigger measurements, yeah, came in an inch smaller from a hand size perspective with Traylon Burks, but wing. <laughs> Wingspan, one of the biggest wingspans yes. here. It's almost yes. 80 inches. That's like offensive tackle level wingspan. I think 33 and a half inch arms is where he landed. That matters so much at the receiver position. Talking to Eric Eager, data scientist here at PFF, he looks at arm length as a, such a high positive correlation to legitimate NFL success at outside receiver. There are no, there are only three receivers that play on the outside with 30 inch arms or less, and one of them is Robbie Anderson. The other one is, a, a couple other ones are just really fast guys. If you are fast and you have really short arms, it's right. not going to work, but you need long arms to really succeed on the outside, Burks check that box. Yeah, I'll say that. You see a guy like Garrett Wilson come in under six foot tall. Mm -hmm. right the top but almost a six foot four wingspan. Yes. That is far wingspan is far more indicative of like mm -hmm. you said, your ability to make plays outside your frame exactly. than height is. The, the amount of times you need to get to the pinnacle of like of how far you can jump and actually use your height is so rare. Mm -hmm. The amount of times you need to make plays outside your frame is a lot. That's what a wide receiver is. So that's what I would recommend like you know looking at these heights coming in, weights coming in. Wingspan, focus on that. Traylon Burks, six foot seven wingspan. I, I would say. argue all That's positions, and arm length and wingspan. Arm length and wingspan is so important to your success in the NFL, regardless of what you're yeah. playing. I think Garrett Wilson had the exact measurements that we yeah. thought he was going to coming in because I figured that he was going to be either right at six foot or a little bit below, and he was. He came in lighter than some people thought, right around 180. I believe he was 183, 23. but he had the long wingspan and he had the big hands yes. too, right? And so like that, basically, you see exactly that. On his tape. Yeah. Like no, Garrett sure. Wilson came in and made, measured exactly what he was. Drake London, his measurements, and we talked about him yesterday as all of our consensus wide receiver ones. He's not working out. We said that yesterday, but he measured in. <laughs> he was not six foot five. The schools lied as they often do. He's six foot do. four. He's six foot three. And seven eighths. Seven eighths. And seven eighths. I'll take so, six foot four. Okay, maybe we'll give him the six foot four. But he was 220. Mm -hmm. So yes. that was good. I thought, I yeah, wondered yeah. if he was going to be a little bit lighter. I was wondering if he was going to be closer to 210, but he's not. He's a little bit bigger. I'd love to see what he could run at that size, but maybe he'll be at a similar, similar weight when we get to his pro day. Six foot four, two twenty for Drake London. I thought those measurables were good. And with Garrett Wilson, and Chris Olave, yeah, lighter than a lot of teams like on their outside receivers, like in the one eighty range. But still, Olave, I believe, is one eighty seven. One eighty seven for Chris Olave. Those are the two Ohio State receivers. But they had, I think, thirty one inch arms plus good, good size hands. Where arm size kind of was a concern. Jahan Dotson is this. I'm excited to see what his vertical and his broad is because a lot of people like his spectacular catch ability, but only thirty and seven eighths inch. Arms. That's not what you like to see. And then you had Wandell Robinson of Kentucky, shortest arms from a receiver we've ever seen at the combine of 20, all time. Of all time, 27 and like three fourths inch arms, which is just absurd. And like again, where does that show up? You know, we were talking to Dane Brugler today from the Athletic of Draft Analysis. Like that guy consistently is diving for footballs because his, you know the, the, the catch rate isn't there. He has to make mm -hmm. it up, make up for it in other ways. You know, if you have 30 inch arms or less at the receiver position, 99.9% .9 of the time it pigeonholes you into a limited role from the slot, maybe moving in the backfield as well. Yeah, and I'll say this about Wandale Robinson. Like he's definitely a pigeonhole as a slot wide receiver, and that wingspan, the ability, to, like I said, make plays outside your frame, is getting more and more important to me in the NFL. And like these guys who we've thought of as traditional slot wide receivers kind of just getting out of phased out in, in terms of the NFL level like a lot of those guys uh, a lot of offenses want bigger slot Power wide receivers. guys right. who have yeah guys who can make plays 
uh, you know, over the middle of the field, over linebackers and stuff like that. So I do think that there's going to be a lot of guys in this class hyped up, you know, undersized guys, what they can do after the catch. Mm -hmm. The NFL is not going to be covering those. Length guys. and speed. Length and speed at all positions is what people are looking for. Yeah. Jameson Williams coming in at 179, so sub 180. Now, I get it. He's been rehabbing, right? Yeah, so it's not like... He's been putting on the weight in, in the gym or anything like that. But are you guys concerned or surprised that he's sub-180 no, right now? So, so Jalen Smith had an injury in about the exact same timeline as Jamison Williams did. And he was a 245-pound linebacker. Comes to the combine, he's 221. And so, like, you lose muscle in your legs when you're not using that leg because right. you just had right. surgery on your ACL. Right. So, to me, I, like, probably he'll probably be about 10 pounds heavier than that when he does actually play. He did year. say, his, I think his agent, or he came out and said, yeah, he lost a lot of weight when he tore his ACL. He usually plays in the 190 to 195 range. Which okay, would, yeah, then, that, 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 would, then that, would be, that would be totally fine there. By the way, uh, update from the chat. 71% of the chat says that Kenny Pickett's hand size matters. Good, it says good. That it matters. Uh, the chat so the is chat in a good place today. The chat it, is a so good place today. Yesterday are. we had a lack of confidence. Today we got some smarts. Okay, yeah. there we go. Maybe they, 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 <laughs> took your, uh, they took your advice there. So, Could you else? beat Kenny Pickett in the thumb war? That's what I want next. Could you beat Kenny Pickett in the <laughs> thumb war? Do you think you could beat Kenny Pickett in the thumb war? I want the poll right now. I need that in the, in the upper 90s for the we chat. Need that. We need that in the chat. Austin wants the confidence there. Okay, there was also something funny that happened uh, with wide receivers. And it was on the bench press. Mm -hmm. And a flood of wide receivers came up there. We saw them walking up to the bench press area, which is right behind us. And I was like, okay, cool. I'm going to go over, sit, at, sit down, watch some wide receivers bench. One by one by one by one, all of them went up to the microphone and said, I'm not benching today. I'm not benching. I'm not, I'm not benching. I'm opting out for a personal reason, something mm -hmm. like that. But then, Religious reasons. But then Josh Johnson saved the day. You guys got to see this clip. It was very funny. It was very confident. We loved it. David Bell, Purdue University. I'm not benching by choice, and I will not be benching at my pro day. Traylon Burks, University of Arkansas. I will not be benching by choice, but I will be benching at pro day March 9th. Jahan Dawson, wide receiver at Penn State. I will not be benching today by choice, and I will be benching at pro day. Here we go. Here we go. Josh Johnson, University of Tulsa, and I, I will be benching. Yeah. The roar of the crowd after that was absolutely <laughs> fantastic. Just I mean, it was loaded, light. right? And everyone's like, not benching, not <laughs> benching. <laughs> Josh Johnson, University of Tulsa, and I will be benching. <laughs> he just drops the mic and gets on. And he, you know what? You can't do that if you're about to put up six reps. Mm -hmm. You can't. No. Oh, and my Jared God. Jared Everett Harris, he's ain't doing that. And he four throws rep. up 14. Yeah. And not only was it, was it a 14, it was a 14 where, like, at the end, he was gassed for about two or three of those reps, and the crowd was super into it, and they were giving him the energy. So... Big ups to Josh Johnson, giving us uh, giving us something to cheer about here. Well, only two receivers that did bench today, and I think the only two receivers we'll see bench here in Indianapolis were Justin Ross of Clemson and then also um, Josh Johnson of Tulsa. Yeah. Tulsa, or, or Johnson with 14, Justin Ross with 11. And the reason you're seeing that, right, it's not that they're scared to compete or they're, they're bowing out of certain drills because they don't think it matters. What they're doing is is they're trying. They do not want to bench and test the right, athletic yeah, test right, or the, right the agility now. drills on the same day. Yep. Every single agent in the book, if you are not throwing up at least 10 plus reps, they're saying, dude, don't do it. It's not worth it. And also, talking to a lot of people in the NFL, no one is factoring in bench, right, a ton for the wide receiver position. No. And even all positions, right? Bench is not nearly as coveted as it's a vanity drill, right? There's a freaking bleacher back there. Right, people like right, to see right, them throw right. up the reps. It's, it's, it's not a big a scouting piece, yeah. Yeah, it, it is. It's more of a spectacle. It's more there for entertainment. But I do think, like, for some guys, obviously, it shows their strength when they're good at it. And I think that you would see a lot of people still bench if it wasn't the same day as the on the field exactly. drill. Right? I mean, we, we heard so many running backs today at the podium be like, hey, what drills are you doing? They're all like, oh, I'm doing everything other than bench. And it's just one after one after one they're doing that. So it'll be interesting to see what the NFL is going to do, whether they're going to keep bench on the same day. Because if they do, it's going to be a lot of what we already saw today. Yeah. And that's a really good number for Johnson. He's an interesting dude, only 183 pounds. But he put on a show in some of the routes and some of the, what he's capable of at the Shrine yes. game. Like yes. He has some unique route running ability to him. But just, he may have the worst hands in this entire draft class. He, I think his oh, drop rate on. for his career is over 15%. Wow. That's not good. And anything over, for per context there, anything over 10%, you're calling, there's red flags. Red when you get to 15, no. that's, a, that's an absurd figure. No, it's, look, pass in the past. How big are his you hands? Know, you get, no, yeah, look, it's in the past. <laughs> He's a, he, is a, he is a looking forward kind of a guy. All right, let's talk about tight ends. Tight end measurements. I feel like the big winner of the day was Jelani Woods, a tight end from yeah. Virginia. He used to be at Oklahoma State, transferred over to Virginia. Six 
foot seven, 253 pounds, and man, he's even flying. We're watching the tests right behind the cameras here, and he is, I mean, he's putting on a show, man. Yeah, I think that he's definitely standing out amongst He the is, in my opinion, your classic every year, go back and watch the tape. Yes. He's too yes. big, he's, he's height, weight, athleticism, 40, all that. I mean, we were jumping as well as he is too. I mean, this is a guy that you have to go back and watch. Why was it not productive? Why was Jelani Woods not productive at Virginia? Productive. Why did, or no, why was he, no, why is he not higher on boards? Okay, yeah. like that? Like, go and see, you know, go, again, get to go back and watch the tape type of guy. I'll say this about Woods, and I think he even saw it here in the drills. He just has an awkwardness to his route running. He fell on a dig route in, at, against air here. Mm-hmm. You know, and that's like, that shouldn't happen. Right, yeah, you know, right, like, right. And so he has an awkwardness to him that I think is why you're seeing people not, despite the freakish tools, not be high on him. And I will say this, he was 265 pounds listed at Virginia this past year. So like, is it comes here and is it kind of a different body type? Like he's lost 10 pounds from that weight that he was listed at. So maybe he is a guy who can be ascending and play at a different sort of uh, body type than he did. And that's a real thing that matters to his evaluation. Six foot, six foot seven in the 90th percentile, arm length of 34 and a half. You guys talked about arm length. That was also in the 90th percentile. And then he also, he threw up 24 reps on the bench. Yeah, with, with that long of arms. long ass arms, man. Yeah, that was elite number. super impressive. Yeah. And then uh, ended up running a 461, unofficial from what we last saw, which 461, if that goes official, would be in the 88th percentile. So this is a dude who, like you said, the athleticism is going to make you go back to the tape. You're like, exactly. okay, do we need to bring this guy up a little bit? And the thing about tight ends, and you look at every tight end that has gone you know, over 800 yards in the past half decade, they've all run sub 4740s. Slow tight ends do not get featured in NFL offenses. you got to move like a wide receiver to produce like a wide receiver at the NFL level. And that's wow. what the NFL is training towards. The guys like Jelani Woods, like – move up boards because of that athleticism. Anything happened from Trey McBride this week at all? I know mean, obviously like things are going on right behind us mm-hmm. on, on the television there for Trey McBride, but like anything change your mind for where you have him after measurements or anything like if that? He puts up a real nice number, like low four fives. I don't expect him to, but if he does, I, I could see being a little bit higher. I mean, to me, he's kind of the guy somewhere day two, probably back into round two, early round three is where I'd start to consider him. But low four or five is, can get you excited about what he could be at the NFL level. Yeah, I think he continues to look smooth in the gauntlet, too. I he think does. some of those guys are herky-jerky in the gauntlet drills. He's a guy that's a really smooth pass catcher. It's, you know, a lot of people feel comfortable in his floor projection in the NFL. I agree with Mike, though. I'm probably not touching him until the top of the third round. And in this tight end class, too, it's just a, it's a big cluster of a lot of the same guys. We need to see some of this athleticism separate him out. 73% of people in the chat believe that they can beat Kenny Pickett. Let's go, chat. Is that enough, though? You think you need it in the 90s? I still like the chat. I, I'm all in on the okay, chat. Okay, I just don't know. Well, how, how small are your hands if you're saying nah? You know, <laughs> you're just like, nah, there's no way, dude. I got six inches. You know, like, people being honest. No, I mean, be how many honest. kids are watching? That's a probably does a the double jointed Does the, the double-jointed factor of Kenny Pickett's hands help or factor. hurt? It's a good factor. I don't know. I don't know. I, I don't know. I don't know if there's a, a leverage factor. I don't know if there, you know, obviously the reach factor, it's tough there. So. I, do think, I do think thumb where it's less of a mental game is rock, paper, scissors. Rock, paper, scissors is like a legitimate, like, competition. Thing in going. my head, I was like, I suck at thumb war, but the last time I did it, it was probably when I was a kid and I was doing it against my older brothers, and then they were probably because they're older than me. So I'd oh. probably be Kenny Pickett still. Oh, you, nice. think, you think Compete. the Eagles did that when you walked in the door? No. They, instead of the Papa shot, they were like, <laughs> Nick Sirianni just like held out his hand like this. They asked them like, to hold different things of different sizes oh, just to no. continue to see oh, it. We'll no. Oh, no. Okay. So let's talk about our favorite quotes from the day because we had the offensive linemen. We also had the running backs up here. We're going to highlight running backs because they had a lot of really great quotes that we want to get to. First one's Brees Hall. Brees Hall, the Iowa State running back. Some people have him as their RB1 in this class. He's got a lot of smooth tape, and he talked about that. He talked about his unique combination of size and smoothness to his game. Listen to what he said. I feel like over the last two years, no running back's been able to do what I've been able to do, and I feel like um, I really respect those other guys' games. They're really great. Kenneth, he's great. Isaiah, I really love watching him, and um, I just feel like I'm just the best running back in this draft. Um, I think a lot of people are questioning my speed right now, which I'm excited to show tomorrow running my 40, and um, I, I, I feel like that's the only question. What do you think you're going to run? Uh, that's a surprise. <laughs> <laughs> Brees Hall talked about prime Le'Veon Bell being the guy that he loves to look to, and I, I, I feel like there's going to be a lot of people that that is music to their ears watching his tape, how patient he is, how he forms in his own blocking scheme, all that kind of stuff. Mike, what do you think about Brees Hall when you watch him? Yeah, I am a big fan of Brees Hall and Kenneth Walker. Like, they're RB1 and RB2, but it's like splitting hairs between the two guys. They're very similar types of backs, and to me, everyone poo-poos this running back class, mm. but those two are three down. NFL starting running backs. Like, they are not too far off what we saw last year in 
guys like Travis Etienne, Javante Williams, and Najee Harris as prospects go. Like, they're right up in that mix, in my opinion. Yeah. So, Brees Hall, if he does come up, put a nice number. If he goes sub 4-5, and he had a lot of explosive plays on tape, so I'm a little surprised people are questioning his speed. I think he is more than fast enough to succeed at the NFL level. Has definitely more explosiveness than a guy like Najee Harris, who went round one last year. So, yeah, to me, Brees Hall is... Like I said, right up there in the mix for running back one. If you have him over Kenneth Walker, I'm not going to really argue with you. Something that has stuck with me that you said earlier is you're surprised that you know PFF would not be consistently mocking a running back in the first round. Really mm -hmm. haven't done that in a long time. I'm surprised that other media outlets aren't. Right? Yeah. Like, why are we that much lower on Kenneth Walker versus Najee Harris? I think you've said that before. I do think that the 40s will you know, weigh that out, right? If a guy comes in and runs low 4-4s maybe versus expected, I think you could start to see a Kenneth Walker or a Brees Hall slip into some more traditional mock drafts. But I do think this is going to be a running back class where on day two, day three, you are getting value. You're getting guys that can play on three downs. All right, let's three down back is actually a really good transition to the next clip that we have because Kyron Williams from Notre Dame, a lot of people love his tape. Mike, you know him very well as a Notre Dame fan. You've seen what Kyron Williams has been able to do, not just with the ball in his hands, but also with his mentality towards blocking, how he can be a big-time eraser in that portion of the game, too. That's seen as a positive, but some people have spun it to say, okay, he's a third down back. And Kyron Williams himself today said, don't call me a third down back. Listen to what he said. Yeah, I like it. Like, I do not like. I don't like hearing that. Like I, when I heard that, when I would hear that, I would, you know, emphasize me being an all-down back, me, me being able to get in the slot first and second down, and then on third down, if you need me to run inside the tackles or run outside the tackles or even pass pro, like I could do that too. So like I see myself as a complete back and all downs and be able to do it all. So, I always like I was a defensive player before I was an offensive player. Like I grew up playing middle linebacker in high school. I was a safety, so like I don't I don't shy away from contact because I know the way that they're coming. Like it's at the end of the day, it's a mentality thing. Like who's gonna be? It's the uh, biggest, like it's a guy, I got like a big on big type of thing. So I'm gonna insert my dominance and let them know that I'm gonna be there every single play, no matter if I'm trying to run you over, if I'm pass throwing, it doesn't matter. Don't call him a third down back. What do you guys think about that when you hear Kyron Williams say that he doesn't want to be known as a third down back? My thought initially is there are so few running backs in the NFL that are like actually leveraged as three down backs. It has become a thing though, like if you're a three down back, it's a guy that you you can trust on first, second, and third down. But so few backs now are getting 300 touches a season, right? It's a Derrick Henry, you know, maybe Nick Chubb in a fully healthy McCaffrey, season. But even a guys. lot of the best teams have three down backs that they don't play on all three downs, right? Like they have guys that they want to sprinkle in yeah. because being fresh at that position is honestly a lot more important than just the wear and tear of a Dehan or whoever it may I mean, be. You got the Bengals given the carry not, not to Joe Mixon at the end of the Super Bowl. Exactly. Like, you know, exactly. Like you give it to Joe Mixon's a three down so, back and they consistently and they leverage it. other people on yeah, third down. Right. So uh, I do think that he is called that because he's elite at it. Like uh, that's why he gets pigeonholed into that. And yeah, he can be more than that. But at like just a shade over 200 pounds is probably what he's going to come in at here. That's, that's not a lot concern. of guys. Exactly. Not a lot of guys carrying the workloads of a Najee Harris that are 200 pounds. Like, that's just that's why he gets kind of put into that role. We get the running back and the offensive tackle measurements tomorrow because we also see them on the field. The 40-yard dash for Kyle Williams, I feel like, is going to be paramount. Yeah. Do we think he's going to run... I'll say somewhere in the four fives that like makes us happy about Kyron Williams. Do you think he's going to hit that? Yeah, uh, anything under four six would be good for him. But to me, he reminds me a lot, just like athletically, of like a Clyde Edwards Hilaire who came in right at four six. Yeah. So I think that's where first round player. Of, but it was first round pick. But that's kind of where I'm seeing. Uh, no, I mean, th that's a good comparison though, right? Like two years ago, we're talking ourselves in the Clyde Edwards Hilaire as a first round player who like yeah. you would not bill as this traditional third down back with his right. size and sure. his speed, but. I, I do think it just depends. Like, sometimes it depends on the offense that you're in. Like, I do think that if Clyde edwards Lair played for South Alabama, he's not even talked about until day two, day three. Like, the fact that it's, like, the offense that's around you, and Kyron Williams, I think they did a good job with that, but it was not in an offense that was scoring wildly. And I think that's why Kyron Williams isn't even going to be sniffing the first round, even though it's, like, a similar skill set to what Clyde edwards Lair offers. Yeah. Another fan favorite amongst the running backs is Damian Pierce, and he had a Dude, I love this massive guy. crowd around him because every time he gets in front of the podium, you just – you smile, you laugh, you mm -hmm. learn something. And truly, I feel like you fall in love with this dude more and more as a prospect, as a player, as a person, everything. He spent a minute of his podium time gushing over his dogs. And I want you guys to just see it because this is the kind of personality that Damian Pierce is. 
Hunter probably eat the most because he's the biggest. Like, Hunter will, like, eat, Hunter will, like, eat his bowl and go try to eat everybody else's bowl. He's just greedy. It ain't no alpha. They all get along well. You know, Hunter will be thinking he big dog, so Gabbana have to get on and, like, let him know. Like, Gabbana the littlest one, but we got the most bite, though. So, you know, Gabbana ain't going for none of that. You know, Hunter think he, since he's the biggest one, he can bully everybody. But, uh, you know, they all get along at the end of the day. They just dogs, you know. <laughs> but they, they be trying to look. The only time they get my bed is, like, if I go, like, grocery shopping or something, I'll probably, I'll probably catch Hunter taking a nap on my bed or something. <laughs> Yeah. You said it. This this dude's awesome. Yeah. Damian Pierce is the best. And it, like whether you're asking about football or things that have nothing to do with football, mm -hmm. he's just all smiles. He's kind of like what, what we talked about with Malik Willis. Like he's just so genuine. Yeah. He's just such a genuine dude. I think. Mean, what do we think about him as a prospect? Though? I, I love him as a prospect. I think it's another guy that I think on day two, day three, you start to get in talking yourself into bringing him into your offense. Maybe you don't have an 800 snap role for him in your offense, but it's a guy that can keep your backs fresh and offers a, a unique skill set. I think one of my favorite quotes on his podium today was like, I don't run with good intentions. You know, I run with bad intentions. <laughs> I want to hurt people. And that's I mean, obvious. And, and Damian Pierce just obvious. like runs like, a, you know, my, one of my favorite things with these guys is just a bowling ball of butcher knives. This guy is just wanting to violently hit people. And that is a great change of pace to a lot of backfields in the NFL right now. Yeah, to me, I don't understand how he hasn't gotten more love. And I guess I kind of do understand because he wasn't even like a full-time starter at Florida. Kind of so oh, don't too. bring don't bring that up. Gators fans are gonna you, you'll get them but started. You go flip on the Georgia tape. I think he had the most rushing outs of any running back against Georgia all year. He didn't even have ten carries in the game. He was a man amongst boys against a Georgia defense that is all like grown men. Like that is an NFL defense, and he was running all over them. So, yeah, Damian Pierce, five foot nine, two hundred twenty pounds. He's going to blow up to me the jumps here in Indy. The 40 is going to be big for him, though. Does yeah. he have that explosive long yep. speed? Because you didn't see too many runs where he really got to open it up on tape. A lot more success than even two really talented backs in Michigan in that game, too. Hassan Haskins, Blake Corn went out ripping it up against Georgia. Damian yeah. Pierce lined it up. So let's end this by, uh, by touching on the offensive linemen a little bit. We talked a lot of running backs. We obviously showed those three clips there. But uh, the offensive linemen were also at the podium. A big takeaway for me was what Evan Neal looked like. Oh my, he, my guy looked trim. A lot like me. Not in a bad, not in a bad way. And he, like, like he had such great shape to his body, and he came in at three thirty-six, I believe, was the yeah. official measurement. Alabama had him listed at uh, three hundred fifty pounds. Two four seven at one point had him listed at three seventy because he was playing as an interior offensive lineman first. And so, yeah. what, what do we think about uh, the new and improved Evan Neal? Even though we're not going to get to see him out on the field, he's not working out. Coming in at around three thirty five. Yeah, that's a really good number for him. Like, I don't think you want to survive at three fifty plus in the NFL. You see the guys doing it, whether it's Mackay Beckton, whether it's Trent Brown. Injury issues. Follow right, those guys. Right. It's just difficult to to your yeah. knees. Everything has a lot of force on it when you weigh that much. So getting down. We're coming in the way he did. Obviously not going to test you, I believe. But he is a freak of nature athletically. That's good for his draft stock. I do right love now. the change in tone, right? Everyone's bumping elbows at bars here in Indianapolis. It's like, oh, man, Evan Neal not testing. Maybe he's got weight issues. Guy shows up looking like Adonis. Yeah, those <laughs> right, things, those things get thrown completely yeah. out the window. This guy's looking really good. Yeah, for sure. Iggy Puanu also sounded great when he was at his podium. People loved what uh, they were hearing out of him. It just It feels like from the offensive tackle group, the vibes were high, as yeah. Austin Gale would say, from the offense the vibes were after they were at the podium there. Do you guys agree? I feel like well, it was just everybody. I had a couple other things there. Charles Cross, who I, we were talking to some people, Richard sophomore coming out of Mississippi State, where some people are concerned about maturity. I thought he held himself well at the podium. I think he's a guy that you feel is experienced and will get better as he talks to media more. Mm -hmm. And then the other guy that everyone loves at every podium is Trevor Penning. Asked like, to describe his play as like, toughness. You know, he's like, I'm kind of like a prick. And it's like, oh, yeah, you know, he does so. Uh, <laughs> that's kind of what he is. And I think a lot of offensive line coaches in the NFL, you know, they, they they talk about what's coachable and what's not, and that's not. Like you can't coach Trevor Penning's nasty. You can't. And like while we talk about athleticism and size, hype, speed, production, that's what coaches latch themselves onto at the combine, right? They're looking for players that they feel that they can put in their locker room that can meet the expectations. That's uncoachable size, athleticism is that. So is demeanor. What do you think about this offensive tackle class overall, Mike? I'm very excited to see them test, to be honest, because I think a lot of the, that top group, the top five guys that I keep highlighting, it's, there's kind of that top three of Vicky Aquanu, Evan Neal. Uh, Charles Cross, I think, will all be high-end athletes. And I think that second group that I really like, the small school guys, Trevor Penning and Bernard Ryman, I think they're going to test off the charts, too. I think this is right. going to be a very athletic tackle group. And then when that's the case, when the tackles that tick all those boxes, they go high. They won't last long. I think all five could be off the board in top 20 picks. Yeah, that's coming to you tomorrow. We've got so much action for you tomorrow. We've got defensive, I'm excited for tomorrow. We've got defensive linemen, linebackers. Like They're going to be at the podium, so we're going to get to talk to a lot of those guys. We've got the testing and the measurements from the offensive tackles and the running backs. Plus, we're going to recap everything that we're seeing right now from the quarterbacks, the tight ends, the wide receivers that are going to finish out their testing later tonight. Thanks, guys, so much for watching. We'll see you right here, same time, tomorrow. Thank you.